Uh, welcome everybody. We're going to do some quarantine cooking on a lovely Sunday afternoon. It's uh, Kansas City. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. Uh, there's a raging toddler running around my kitchen and house. And I am going to do some Instapot ribs. And we're going to do a butternut squash mashed with some ham and spices. And I'm going to use a couple of different recipes and... Uh, I'm going to modify a few of them to my taste, and, and we'll go from there. All right, we're going to work on getting the Instant Pot set up and ready to roll for these ribs. We want to get those jamming. Uh, I know KC is a barbecue town, and the purists will be like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're going to pressure cook some ribs. And I'm like, they're good, and they're easy, and we're going to finish them off in the broiler, and you're going to like them. So... I just take and plug the thing in, and it'll come on automatically. All right. As soon as you plug it in, it will turn on the digital readout, and it will tell you that it is off, which is great. It will also tell you when it's high pressure, low pressure, when it's hot. It will also tell you when you are in uh, release mode. All right. Let's prep some ribs. All right, our prepped ribs are out of the package and they're ready to go. Uh, the directions want you to cut the rack of ribs into four equal places and rub all sides down with a spice rub. Uh, this rub is salt, brown sugar, chili peppers, paprika, garlic powder, cayenne, and black pepper. I, I like to use a nice kosher salt and I throw a few other seasonings in there that I won't divulge because I'm a real barbecue guy and I don't tell everybody what my rib rub recipe is. But those are the basics that go in there and you can figure out your own likes and dislikes and i rub the heck out of these things so here we're gonna go i just got it all in a nice bowl and i wash my hands real good and i just get in there and do it you know because we're just rubbing ribs and yes it's a little messy but man you feel good when you get these in and they look real good coming out I mean, you want to coat them real good. Did I say this was messy? I probably should have used a bigger plate. I'm a slacking. Rub both sides, rub them good. Don't be afraid of the, to really use that rub. All these ingredients are cheap. Most of them are staples you have around the house. If you're missing something in your rub, it's no big deal. Yeah, oh man, these are gonna be so good. I got my trash can right down here. Just gonna wipe the big excess off of my hands. And then I'm gonna go wash my hands and we'll move on to the next. All right, we're moving on to more of the getting the Instant Pot ready. The first thing I want to show you is this is apple juice. So here's one of the ways I deviate from the recipe. The recipe says to use either water or um, beef broth in the Instant Pot. I use apple juice for sweetness because here in Kansas City, we like a little touch of sweetness with our barbecue tang. So we're going to take a cup of this apple juice right here. All right, next, we're gonna take the ribs and they go into the pot in the form of a teepee. So let's take two of them, just lean them up against one another. The other two sides, lean them up against each other like that. And I'm gonna pat the ends, a little bit of this rub right here. and you'll be set. Now I got gunk all over my hands again. But that's all right, we're making ribs, we're making barbecue. That's why I keep the towel handy. I can keep things a rolling. All right, we're just gonna take our lid, secure it on there. See this nozzle here? 
You want to make sure it's on the ceiling, not venting. Otherwise, it won't seal. These will only go on one way. Pop it on. And, and then I give a little tug. That way you know it's locked on there. And we're going to look right over at our recipe here. It says this wants us to select manual and cook on high pressure for 30 minutes. So you hit the pressure cooker button. And then dial in the number you want. Boom. Uh, it will take up to 20 minutes to come up to pressure, uh, especially since this is cold. So you definitely, when you're using the Instant Pot, you got to save extra time. There it's clicked on. It knows we're wanting to cook. The button says high pressure. And it also says keep warm, meaning it's kind of like a crock pot that it will, will keep your stuff warm. Uh, one more double check to make sure we are on sealing and not venting. Boom. Now uh, we got to bring it up to pressure, and when it comes to 30 minutes, we're good. We've got 25 minutes left on the Instant Pot. It's going to cook, and then it has to release. So it's time to get the oven. Going. All right, we're down to three minutes left in the Instant Pot. I've got my baking sheet and my tongs. We're going to brush it on. Your favorite barbecue sauce here. This is not my favorite barbecue sauce. This is what I had in the cabinet. They'll still be yummy. Don't worry about the crappy barbecue also, sauce. Also, I like to use these... These are awesome. Some people call them a pastry brush, but this one is not, uh, it's not bristly. It's, it's like they're plastic, but they're not plastic. They're that fancy, whatever, but they wash up real easy. So you can put all kinds of different things in there. You can use them for butter. You can use them for barbecue sauce like we're going to do. You can use them for all kinds of things. We're going to do a quick release. So throw a towel over your release knob. And wait for the pin to drop. All right, took about three minutes. The pin is dropped in the back. Whoop. Okay, I'm gonna hit cancel so it goes to off. Move those to the side. Get my tongs out. We got ribs. Now I'm going to let those sit just a second. And I'm going to get a couple of hot pads so I can dump this fluid out so we can start doing our butternut squash mashed potatoes. All right, while the squash is cooking, we're going to get these ribs glazed and in the oven. I like everything barbecue to be liberal. So get it on there and we're going to work it in with this pastry brush. Real good. My wife likes her ribs really saucy, and so I'm gonna give it to her saucy. That's a joke for all of you out there. Okay, we're gonna glaze these up real good. Let's flip them over here. These, I could, I could probably pull the bones out of them right now if I wanted to, but I'm gonna bake them off good. When you're doing stuff with your fingers, make sure you only get one hand messy. Otherwise, you get everything else messy. See, these are super tender. You could eat them now. But once we get them glazed in that oven, man, they're really going to be awesome. It's going to seal that flavor in. I wish you guys could smell these through the videos. They are fantastic. All right, these are going in the oven. All right, ribs are going in the oven. Seven minutes. We're gonna do seven minutes on each side. Don't forget, we're gonna check on our ribs. It says uh, seven minutes on each side. You know, it's been in there five. Let's just take a look real quick and see how they look. 
Oh yeah, they're looking real good. Another minute, we'll flip those, cook them another seven minutes, and then we'll bring them off to rest. These are gonna be awesome. All right, here's our ribs right out of the oven. They look really tasty, yummy. It's got that nice glaze on them. I'm just gonna let them sit there and rest for a couple minutes, and then they'll be ready to Here's serve. Our finished ribs. I just put them on a basic white dinner plate. Kind of show them off a little bit because they got that nice golden uh, mahogany color. And they just uh, they soak that sauce up and it glazed real nice. And well, they just smell heavenly. We're just gonna have a great great Sunday afternoon meal. Here it is, ribs, mashed butternut squash, green peas, nice fun Sunday afternoon dinner, ready to go. Not too much trouble. Got the used Manstead pot. I probably got an hour and a half total in time here, maybe two hours, but it was a fun way to spend the afternoon with my little girl.